Hi, how's it going? I wanted to uh, do a quick video about pressure treated wood and all the various types that they use and whether there are any health risks of using it on like playground equipment with children now or even in your garden. And so uh, here's uh, some examples of uh, you know untreated versus various types of uh, treated wood and I'm gonna start with this is the EPA website, Overview of Wood Preservative Chemicals. And I want you to be aware of you know, what it is that they have available that they've approved for different things. And here's all the different things. Building, season building materials, utility poles, fence posts, rails, structural members, structures dwellings, transportation vehicles, crop containers, lawn furniture, playground equipment, garden landscape timbers, and log homes. So some of the uh, older wood preservatives they used were like chromated arsenicals. This is an arsenic based and they had used this for a long time. And then uh, somebody caught wind that they were using arsenic and arsenic is bad. But remember the dose determines the poison. And there really wasn't any, uh, any history of problems with this but uh, because of the, the brouhaha over you know people you know concerns they took it off the market and so now it's a restricted use product and only used uh, for certain applications creosote is another thing you have probably aware of they use that on the bottom of utility poles before they put it in the ground and then they have uh, railroad ties or another thing you'll see and even when you go to like some of the big box stores like Home Depot you'll see railroad ties and it's the very dark coating that's on the wood uh, PCP Pentrochlorophenol. I don't claim to know how to pronounce that, but anyways, this was a big thing going all the way back uh, until 1987, and again a big brouhaha, and they removed it off of the. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that was really any problem or not, but uh, I think they're still uh, can use this on certain applications, so railroad ties, utility poles, wharf pilings, things like that. So uh, newer wood preservatives. So there's a fungicide that was registered in 1981. It's approved for surface application of siding, plywood, millwork, shingles, shakes, and above ground structures. Uh, Tria diamophon, same thing, a fungicide. 2009, composite products, wood products, above ground and ground contact, wood decking, patio furniture, millwork, guardrails, utility poles, yada yada. Acid copper chromate. This is one of the primary ones that I've seen that appears to be in uh, in use today. Um, this says it's a register for industrial and commercial uses. So there's another thing called ACQ, and uh, so these are some of the ones that we're seeing: borates, copper azol, uh, yada yada. So ACQ is a water-based wood preservator preservative presents decay fungi and insects and I tried looking up uh, like Home Depot weather shield and I went through several things I believe that might be what they're using here but it does not say exactly what uh, what their chemical composition of their ground contact uh, lumber is but uh, what I've been using has been the weather shield ground contact only and uh, it's yellow pine. Let me see if I get a picture. This is what it looks like. And uh, it's, I've had really good luck with this. All right. So borates. Now, I've done um, like some building out basements where we stud it all out and uh, even some uh, wood structures like uh, wooden sheds and things and I will spray there are several different types of borates that are water based and they're not poisonous at all it's just basically a salt and uh, you spray this on the wood and it uh, soaks in so you new use uh, I usually use like pressure treated wood for the the bottom foundation part but then I build everything above that from the plywood with the uh, non pressure treated and then I usually spray it with this and if I insulate you know you spray it before you insulate it, that kind of thing, and it works really good for, uh, you know, termites specifically. But it also 
I think uh, I think it keeps from having uh, also like uh, they also put like a fungus type uh, treatment in there as well. Then there's a copper azole, copper naphthenate, polymeric betadine, whatever. But uh, anyways, these are the key things. And uh, so what I did, so since ACQ actually looks like the primary new thing that they're using, I went and did a research and I found a technical paper for human health, let me blow this up a little bit, human health risk evaluation, ACQ. And I believe, based on what I've been reading, that I think this is what they're primarily using in uh, pressure-treated wood these days. And so somebody went off and they did an evaluation and uh, tried to determine whether there would be any risk for, like, plate ground equipment, uh, even, even uh, you know, like garden stuff. And uh, so this went through all kinds of uh, uh, looking for potential health effects, including cancer and stuff like that. But just to skip, you know, 20 pages, I went blah, 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 read all this, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to save you like 20 minutes of reading here. The risk evaluation included all chemical components of ACQ type D that might be present on the surface of treated wood. Overall, the results demonstrate that exposure to copper, DDA, carbonate, and MIMCI from ACQ type D from the surface of treated wood are not expected to be associated with any adverse effects to adults or children who might come into contact with this product. So today's wood is not a problem. In fact, uh, I should have done the research for the previous thing. I would read a lot of uh, technical papers that said even the arsenic treated stuff was not a problem either. It was only under some extreme condition that it could have been an issue but again the dose determines the poison um, you you have to have a significant amount to affect you and this is kind of incidental uh, what would happen when you're dealing with this and you know just like anything when I'm out there in my garden I'm getting all grungy when I come in I wash my hands you know um, there's more issues you know probably when it's a brand new wet lumber because you know it's completely saturated and uh, that's probably when you got to be the, the the safest with it but after you know all the liquid evaporates it's probably m much more safer but uh, anyways you know wear your personal protective equipment probably the the overall worst um, problem you can have with pressure treated lumber is when you're cutting it and you're making airborne dust you don't want to you know ingest this stuff um, but it would take an awful lot to end up with like a copper poisoning or something like that. So you don't even really need to worry, you know. So a lot of times when I'm cutting, you know, I make sure the wind's blowing away from me, not on me. And, and you, just, you just try to be careful. That's the bottom line. Um, a lot of my beds, I've actually built them out of retaining wall blocks. And uh, they're, they're beautiful that way. And again, they last forever. This type of wood is maybe a 20-year product in uh, ground contact. So over time I probably will end up replacing my beds with the uh, more retaining wall blocks just because then it's done forever but it's uh, it gets you started quickly when you use these uh, pressure treated products and it's uh, relatively inexpensive versus the uh, retaining wall blocks so there's a trade-off everything that you do all right well I hope uh, I hope this helps you understand about the uh, you know pressure treated lumber let me go back to this thing because uh, there's lots of different uh, coatings and it's this ACQ is what uh, they're primarily using now and uh, I hope everybody's treating you well I hope you're doing well do the best you can God bless